Hello, viewers and listeners. All right, we're back with another. Well, actually, not another. This is a movie chat tonight. This is doing. This is something different. And so, thank you for joining us. I've got a guest with me tonight, and it's not the usual crew. It is Henry from hey. the Bond. You're on. Hey, right. bub. So Henry contacted me, well, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, and said. Um, I would like to say for the record, we just chat naturally as well throughout the weeks as well. It's not just out of the blue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you contacted me about um, a news bit I did on Kevin Smith and More Rats 2. Mm. And you said we should do something about clerks. I did. And I thought, yeah, that'd be fun, be entertaining. Why not? Be I haven't watched clerks for years, but... Uh, this is, I've been a, bit, a trip down memory lane with this one. So whether this is going to be funny, entertaining or what, I don't know. I have some mixed feelings. I know that you do. So yeah. why? Why why did you want to talk about Clerks then? Was there anything well, particular? Well, we're now, I think it was a combination of things. Um, number one is um, I think just before you posted that out, that um, news report, which by the way, everyone go check out the news reports every day, just for the record. But because you're talking about more acts like the sequel, I just bought Frank to like some Christmas money, um, Clerks Free. All right. And I think I just watched at the same time that came out. And I know you said in the video, you know, you're a bit of a fan of Clerks. So yeah, I just mentioned saying, look, if you know, if you want another video idea, why not let's mm. just talk about the Clerks well, trilogy now? And I think, you know, you got yeah. a bit excited about that as well. Yeah, because I haven't watched the original Clerks for years. And um, I was trying to think when I first watched it. And how I got to learn about it. And um, there's a bit of a story there. There's an old friend of mine named Andy. We used to call him Webby right, for <laughs> obvious reasons. Anyway, and uh, he rented a copy of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back on VHS. I love Jay's. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> and we watched that. And it was we were both in our early 20s then. And, you know, some of it was hilarious. And it was of the of its time. It was funny. It was kind of a bit of lad culture, lad humor and stuff. And, you know, we enjoyed it. And then from that, I started to research what else Kevin Smith had done. Because there's clues in Jay and Silent Bob straight back to previous stuff that's happened. And I was like, what, what are they talking about? In a weird way. I know it's a very bad analogy, but at the time it was almost the Avengers Endgame of the viewer skew universe where everything was sort of coming together. Yeah, yeah, because it's very it, bad it analogy. Well, yeah, uh, I had a similar experience to you. Right. Because when I was a kid, like this was back when I was like 10, 11. So, yeah, there was posters in my school, like, for, you know, for like new films, kind of, because they did this little thing to keep with kids and whatnot. And there was posters like Jane and Silent Bob Strike Back. You know, for kids. We, yeah, we watched it. I know. I think it was like when it finally came on TV, like we watched it. And everyone, like, I love Jane Silent Bob's Strike Back. I think it's just one of those films from my childhood. Yeah. I just naturally like have it's like comfort food. And mm -hmm. I was just enjoying it. I had no idea about the Viewer School Universe, Clerks, all of that stuff. Yeah. I knew they had a cameo in Scream Free. And then I'm not joking. I was like, when I was at uni, I was like, they made me watch Chasing Amy. His like yeah, really rock right. and pop. And suddenly yeah. it was like, I saw it like, what the fuck are Jane Silent Bob? Are they in like are they like Easter eggs in random films? Am I am I going to find a Bond film randomly with Jane Silent Bob suddenly yeah. appearing in it? And that's well, when that's I learned about the VXQ universe. And that's what's cool about that. They have that little road of discovery. So mm. you, yeah, because the think storylines interconnect, characters interconnect. So I went on a back catalogue lookup and I found Clerks, mm. and I watched it and I thought it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, I love 100%. the rawness of Clerks. The fact that, what was it, 200, no, $25,000 roughly that yeah. cost to make? It's, Could it's you such a brilliant doing film. Now? I mean, it's imagine... the standard. I mean, for, you know, again, you know me, I did film production, and teachers used to go, like, guys, when you want to make a film, they always use Clerks as a, like, a, like a learning block, saying, look what he did. And as a sort of inspirational film, like you can do it, go out and make your movie. No, oh, really, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I mean, certainly my experience. They said, you know, yes, try and make something a bit better. <laughs> that was. <there. laughs> um, but say, but you know, this guy came out, you know, maybe. did it. Yeah, did it for twenty five, you know, thousand dollars. He just made a film about his life, you know, in Clerks, and look what's happened yeah. to him. Go out. It's actually quite an inspirational story to filmmakers. 
It is. Yeah. I just like it because it, I like buddy movies. I really like buddy movies. Mm. Um, and sorry, Samir's with us in the chat. And this is why, um, yeah, like, I don't, That's, Justin, uh, Justin's moving house at the moment, so he's busy. And I knew that Samir had never watched this. This is not his type of film. <laughs> so that's why Samir's not with us. But um, no, go and watch it, Samir. It's on Plex. You know what to do. Um, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah. <laughs> watch it at Christmas, mate. Yeah. <laughs> You'll appreciate it. To this it day, I'm never looking at Lawrence Arabia the same way again. <laughs> Little jingle bells in the background. <laughs> Ridiculous. I miss you, bud, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I was saying about buddy movies and mm. just the friendship that's portrayed between uh, Randall Dante mm. and Jay and Silent Bob, I find is is great. You know, I really really like that in these movies. The fact that Dante and Randall are just always they're always on the brink of falling out at any one conversation as well. But isn't that true friendship in a way? Yeah. I mean, I, sh I mean, I joke about it. I mean, basically, you know, I showed this film to my best friend, Edward. Um, he liked it. He wasn't, like, massively obsessed with it. But, you know, it's not quite as... But he said that was the most realistic friendship he had ever seen on screen, that sort of mm. Dante and Randall. Certainly, maybe just between us. But that was how... I, I think that's one of the beauties, actually, of that film. It's... as I think you, you just said a minute ago, it actually, in a way, is so realistic mm. to people we know. Yeah, yeah. I've had friendships like that as well, where you're just always on the brink of getting into a fist fight. <laughs> yeah. And then you just relax, uh, you chill, and then by the next day, you've completely forgotten about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, clerks, there are some cringeworthy moments in the first film, stuff, jokes that don't land, and I think it really is a product of its time as well. When I was oh, yeah. watching it, I was watching it on, I think, like Thursday evening, last week and um yeah some of the stuff i thought christ that's just not it's not even funny and it wasn't particularly funny at the time but um mm. the bit that always gets me and makes me laugh out loud is 37 dicks yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a row <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean that's that you know it, <laughs> and they'll be talking about it someone in the background goes day seven <laughs> you know, uh, a measurement of love is now if someone makes you lasagna after that film. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, that's a great... that, yeah. Go on, go on. I was going to say, following on, you know, some of the jokes that never fly. You know, weird enough, one of them that never landed for me in the film was right at the beginning, which was with the guy selling um, chewing gum and showing you know, the fake, you know, the fake lever on screen. Oh, the Chewley's gum. Yeah, I never. Yeah. For me, that one was just like that was like. I get the well, joke. I just can't. I'm just not laughing at this one. Yeah, it wasn't great. They end up throwing cigarettes at Dante. I, yeah, I wonder if that's something that, you know, Kevin Smith said that he worked in a quick stop, didn't he? Or a mm. sort of convenience store like that. He still owns it. And yes, yeah, apparently so, yeah. And um, he said that a lot of this was from his own experiences. So perhaps that was just an old sales technique in the 90s that, you know, there's a certain. I bet. Yeah, so that's why he put it in there. So it might have actually been a real event, you know, in some, some case. And, Maybe that, yeah, because he didn't really do an awful lot. That bit, I, it was kind of what twenty minutes of of nothingness, really. Just it seemed like twenty minutes anyway. Oh yeah, I know. But again, opposed to that, there's some great moments. Like there's the ice hockey game on the roof, which is really great. See, you know, I never liked that bit. I never liked that because it's too small, too too small a confined area. They're not actually <laughs> moving or doing anything. They're just hitting each other with sticks. With maybe just because, like, when I was working at a when I was a lifeguard, it wasn't obviously on the roof, but sometimes it was quiet, or we like something like we would literally go to like the sports area and just have a game of something like dodgeball or something. So I can relate to that a bit, maybe I don't mm. know. But you know, again, there's the milk person, there's the eggs. It's you know yeah. just all that stuff. You know, like the video. You know, the people complaining about the silly little things. One of the things, that, uh, it's a small bit, but it gets me every time it clicks, makes me laugh, is where Randall is in the video store reading like a newspaper or a magazine, and that woman is asking him about what's best. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't even look up. And then she says, well, screw you, and throws the things on, throws the videos on the floor. 
And then he follows her out and says, yeah, you're not allowed to rent here anymore. And Jason Mewes goes, yeah, that just <laughs> makes me laugh every time. I, <laughs> I mean, the other thing I love about this, this is, this is going to be my behind the scenes little bit for this one. And one of the reasons um, Kevin Smith always planned for like Scott, um, not Scott, Jason Mewes to be in it, you know, and do a stick. And apparently I was reading the script. He was like going, no, each, no, each, no, each. What am I saying? Who says this? Stuff? He says, you motherfucker have done it literally for the last years I've known you. He goes, I don't say something. Yeah. You say schnoochy boochie all the whole time. <laughs> and I just love that. I say good background, those two, because those two are very good friends. And I, I suppose that's why the whole buddy movie thing um, oh, yeah. was Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith have known each other for years. And I think I could, I could be wrong on this, or maybe, maybe you don't know, but um, J- Jason Mewes wanted to do a Clerks 2. And Kevin Smith said to him, you need to get off the heroin and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, it was basically, I mean, obviously, you know, Jason, by the way, congratulations to the man, a real triumph story and a real sort of heartfelt story about how he, you know, he went, he's had so much drugs in his life Mm. and he, you know, he got over, he went to rehab. He's really turned his life around. He has done so much advocate work. Um, Mm. So I've always got a bit of respect for this news, but I think, I think what it was is like Jane and Bob strike back after that, he had the real issue. He wasn't in Smith's film after that, which was, I think, Jersey Girl, because he was on I've the drugs. I've never seen that. Never no, seen nor it. have I. Not. Um, and I think because he was clean, he could come back and do Clerks too. And I think for like 10 or 20 whatever year sobriety, as a little reward as well, to combine it with what he wanted to do, they did make Jane and Bob reboot, saying, you know, you've been clean for so long, let's play again. I've not seen that either. I've not seen the reboot one yet. Um, you'll probably end up liking it. I don't think it'll be your favourite via Skewverse, but you know how you know you and me talk about how it's also everything's just on repeat. It's a degree yeah. in the film industry. That is a film perfectly knowing it is self-aware. It is completely rebooting or remaking the exact first movie while taking the piss out of remakes, reboots, and sequels. Yeah, I might appreciate that. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, you know, literally there's a bit in the reboot literally goes, tell me if you know the story. A droid's got an evil plan, got the plans for an evil um, weapon base, but it's landed in the desert and blah, blah. And said, Star Wars, no. Episode seven, The Force Awakens. That's how you do a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just stuff like that. It's, it's great fun. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I mean, again, those two have become, you know, synonymous and, you know, been... I think everyone now looks forward to that moment, whether it's in a Clerks movie, not in one of their own movies, but everyone looks forward to that moment where it's, you know, Jay and Silent Bob are going to be in it. Yeah, it's a strange setup as well, though, isn't it? Where you know, Kevin Smith's character doesn't say anything. and Or, or whatever he does say. I remember Jay and Silent Bob strike back when Kevin Smith's character just broke. Silent Bob actually just screamed at Jason Mewes about how stupid he was and whatnot. And that seems to be the, the character is that at these opportune moments, there's something really poignant. Well, that came it. out of nowhere. That honestly, that honestly came out of um, originally Kevin obviously wanted to be in his own movie. He wanted, mm-hmm. he was originally going to play Dante. Oh, which right, he saw okay. himself, but he realized I can't learn this fucking dialogue. I'm going to play silent Bob. I'm going to be with Jay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's laziness. Yeah. And then Jay <laughs> couldn't get, you know, the, you know, we were just talking about the, the lasagna line. Yeah, he couldn't say it, so he said, "I'll fucking say it," and that's where like the one line came out. So it became a recurring gag that once in a movie he will suddenly come out and say the Pearl of Wisdom. Oh, uh, right, or makes something. sense. Or in Clerks yeah. too, where he, you know they riff on that when it comes to that moment when you you know, you know, Simon Bob's going to say something. And goes, I got nothing. I've got, I've got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not love this guy? He's just I love his honesty yeah. about it. He did lose a bit of fan, bit of fandom over the old uh, He-Man thing on Netflix, though. Yeah, but I'm to be honest. Um, you know, I'm not a He-Man fan myself. I've never grown up with He-Man. I've just, you know, when that came out, I wasn't even interested in watching it. I know it was Kevin Smith, but I'm yeah. just not a He-Man fan. So it's just like no. I. Really no, neither am I. And there was a lot of people I think that were pretending to be He-Man fans, but uh, mm. they had a point with all that stuff. But anyway. Topic for a different conversation, maybe. But, um, mm. Yeah, so Clerks, clerks, the original Clerks, um, 
there's some great moments in that, and I definitely recommend people go and watch it. Just, just for some of the clever dialogue and also the interaction between the characters and the fact that it costs twenty five thousand dollars to make. It's a great film to watch. Some of the jokes land, some don't, but um, definitely recommended. And I realised that on. IMDb, it's a seven point seven rating out of ten, which is a you know, better than I'd, average. I'd say that's the. I'd say that's exactly where I put mm. it. Yeah, I mean, it's not hilariously funny, but there are moments in it that are great. But I will say about in comparison to maybe other films, and certainly this comedy, the Clerks has so much rewatch value. It's a film I think you just love to rewatch, unlike some films you can just maybe watch once or twice in your life, and that's you're done. I feel like what Clerks. Makes, what makes you say that? Well, I know, I've just always ended up sort of like, you know, if I want a comedy, I mean, yes, I've got plenty of films to choose from, but it's like, okay, I'm going to move mm. something. You know, I'll just put on Clerks. I'll just choose one of the Clerks. At the time, it was like between the two and just watch one of the Clerks. I mean, yes, I might fast forward a couple of bits and like go to my own specific sections in it that I love. Yeah. But I do feel it's just one of those films, certainly for me, I can just literally just write, I'll just watch this. You know what? I think I'll watch 37. I think I'll watch, um, you know, Salsa Shark, Death Star Contractor section. You know, I might just watch those bits. It's just nice to rewatch these bits again for me. Yeah, the Death Star bit. I forgot about that until you just mentioned it. But yeah, that was a pretty clever bit. That and that will come <laughs> up later in, in Clerks 3 to come later on the video. <laughs> so Clerks 2, what's your memories of this? I mean, I, when did you first see this? Um, Clerks 2, I saw... Um, again, when I was at uni, um, I'll say this right now, it's my favourite of the trilogy. Um, okay. I think it's probably Kevin Smith's one of his best films he's ever done, outside of Dogma, um, which I love Dogma, but again, we're going Dogma off Dogma is good. Yeah. I haven't seen that for years, actually. I need to watch um, it again. What I love about Clerks too, I think I love the message and the themes of it, that the idea of like you know being in your 30s and still not finding your way. You know, It's never too late to you know, restart your life a bit. I mean, I watched mm. this when I was, I'll be honest, I watched this when I was about 25. Um, I was really, at, so far in my life, the lowest point in my life at this point. And I felt this film sort of helped me through it a bit in a weird way. All right. okay. I love the love story. I love the location, the jokes. I know he took a lot from his stand-up tour, put it into this film, but it works. I just really like Clerks too. I just, I don't know. I, for me, it's my favorite. What about you? Um, I like the fact it was in colour. <laughs> That's definitely a plus. <laughs> you know why they shot on black um, and white. Um, didn't he explain it in Clerks 3 why he shot Yeah, that's the exact reason yeah. why they did it in black and white. Yeah, but I, I, I can't remember now why. Essentially, but, it was uh, like they, tried, they couldn't afford colour and lighting was yeah. so crap, it, looked, it was easy just to film it all in black and white. Yeah, yeah. Um, Clerks 2, okay. So there are some great bits in that, but there's also some stuff in there that makes my flesh creep. Oh, really? I don't like... Yeah, I don't like the Kelly kinky kelly bit you know the bestiality oh the donkey, donkey show <laughs> that uh, that always made me cringe a bit i don't particularly like that um and be honest though scene. did you not laugh your head off slight cringe when he was basically got the spit and it went and it went right through oh god i mean that just makes oh, it's one of rich it's like no yeah. and that's a proper load of that was a lot as well it's like you're yeah. saving it up for five minutes to then just oh Oh, I hate that bit. But um, the dancing scene as well, the ABC Jackson 5 dancing scene. Oh, yeah. Well, that was just, I can get that. I mean, I'm a bit more of a musical fan, so I thought that was just, that came out of nowhere, and it's just a bit of a, like, a stupid little fun sort of, you know, because those two obviously are falling in love. It was meant to be, like, I think, I suppose, a bit of representation of that a bit. Maybe. Disney fine clerks. I saw absolutely no point in that whatsoever. And did you see how diverse the cast was dancing in the parking lot? Oh, yeah. An Indian woman and a full sari or whatever it is they're called and whatnot. And I'm like, what the fuck is this about? Why is this even in this bit? Um, and also the Jason music, the J bit where he's um, goodbye horses, where he's reenacting the whole. Um, uh, oh, Science of the Lambs. Science of the Lambs. Yeah. <laughs> that bit. That I is love like, that. Fuck. It's like, oh, it's true. Put it away, man. And it, yeah, where he's like got the coat open and he's, oh. <laughs> Oh, that's just so. I think that's just so Jason Muse. Oh God! Yeah, but outside so, of that, you've got like the Lord of the Rings analogy. God created oh, the Transformers. Um, <laughs> the Lord of the Rings got, thing was brilliant. Yeah, because I remember at the time of seeing this, um, mm. 
I've not been out long out of a relationship with a girl that was massively into Lord of the Rings. Mm. And she made me watch like Return of the King, the full unedited version, which, which probably took about a day to watch. Yeah. And I just, I hated it. I rebelled against it. I was like, no, don't like this. And so when he was talking about the trees walking, I just mm. fucking said to piss myself <laughs> laughing. I, mean, I could laugh at that. You know, even... <laughs> But well, you know how much I'm a Star Wars fan. Uh, I mean, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, um, even the bit when he's making fun of the prequels, like "Hello, my name is in my shitty acting is ruining saga." It's like, oh, don't get me wrong, I yeah. actually have a big fan. But even that, I laugh my head off that pickle fucker. You know, uh, and that was Jason Lee as well, wasn't it? He was, uh, yeah, he was um, an internet guy in this. He'd sold an internet. Yeah, he's, they in sold his... an internet company. Yeah. But Jason Lee was also a comic book creator in Chasing Amy, wasn't he? Yeah, well, they've all played different bits, different parts. I mean, Ben Affleck's played about now about four or five characters in the in the viewer skew verse. Right. Okay. Because I thought there was a thread between all of them that kept the, the yeah. There is. Together. I mean, I mean, the thread is Jane, Simon, Bob. They're the same throughout all the films. But you know, mm. the actor played um, Dante's played a couple of different roles. Um. <laughs> Oh, he's a mole rats, wasn't he? Wasn't he one yeah. of the contestants in a dating show or something? He also was in Dogma playing a news reporter of the brother of um, Dante. Um, there's just, you know, little things like, you know, Ben Affleck's played, you know, a couple of different roles. It's just, you know, but, you know, we all know that, you know, they just come in and play, basically. <laughs> but no, I mean, I love I love it. You know, again, the conversation, you never go ass to mouth. Or, you know, yeah, Zario Dawson being so incredible, I think, in that movie. And this is me getting all, like, film, film lover, film really thing. The prison section where they have the big conflict of the movie, I give so 10 out of 10 for dialogue, performance, pacing. What a great scene. Yeah. I like the fact that Dante is just kind of just teetering on the edge there. Mm. You just see him. He's like, well, you know, don't leave me. And he's just almost about to break. That's, yeah. You get a little bit emotional sometimes with these things. If you've been, you know, if you've had like a real true, proper best friendship mm. and you've had turbulent times, it does get you a bit. Those Absolutely. Scenes. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> like no, 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 Randall right. saying, I love you, man, in a platonic way. And then, yeah, Jerry I mean, in the corner goes, Yeah, right. <laughs> my best friend, and um, but he's back down south, you know, we're not as close as we used to be anymore, but you know, he knows that I'm, you know, Effectively, you know, we've said it to each other. We, you know, even though we're, we are brothers, you know, it might not be in blood, but certainly by. So, you know, I get that. Again, you're. I mean, I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring this up right now, and I'm not going to say the name of the racial slur, but the whole racial slur section. I mean. Yes. Yeah. The porch one. Yeah. It, yeah. It takes <laughs> balls for, to write that scene. It takes balls to write that. Um, scene. But you could then. You mm. could, and people would laugh at it. Because it was 2006. Whereas, oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. Now, no chance. Oh, yeah. You couldn't no get away chance. with that now. Uh, there'd, be, there'd be BLM members writing outside of theatres and stuff and setting fire things. And that's a damn shame. That really is a shame. Because that scene is hilarious. And the, and the, the black people involved in that as well were like, damn, he didn't call us that, that yeah. slur. He didn't call us that. I'll take the free food. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Again, I think it's actually quite a realistic interpretation. It's like, they're not... Yeah. Yeah, you know, it wasn't for the record, everyone, us. Race, racism is wrong in every shape, in every way. Don't get me wrong. We're very much saying that, aren't we? But we're just saying here, yes. it actually is a perfect analogy of educating people actually about mm. something they probably actually don't even know about. Army hands up, this racial slur, I'd never heard this one in my life. Before no, neither film. I. No, no, it's a very yeah. American thing. I knew for like yeah. Song in the South, A Certain Baby, um, mm. which is, you know, stuff like that. But I'd never heard this one. Um, well, this slur, I actually I got an American friend, and um, at the time of this movie, um, I, I mentioned it to him. I said, "Have you seen Clerks Two yet?" And he's like, "Yeah, I saw it the other day." I said, "That bit with the, the you know the slur bit that we're talking about." So I've never heard of that before. He said, "Oh yeah, all the time." So it's a very American thing. But um, something that my American friend actually mentioned him. He he bought me a movies shirt, mm. and had it sent over from America. I tried looking for that yesterday, couldn't find it. Gutted, because I was going to wear it tonight. Proper movie, you know, the old movie smock that they wear. Absolutely gutted. So Christ knows when that's gone. It's probably it's somewhere. Shame. Hopefully, hopefully I'll find it. It might be in a loft or something, but mm. yeah. But I really wanted to wear that tonight, but pff, bollocks. 
but no, I mean, for me, just Clerks 2, I think, was his, is just one of his best movies he has ever done. I just really enjoy it. I just thought that bit where um, Dante comes into Randall. Randall's got a deck of cards. Yes. And he says, and he says I'm pregnant. Uh, you know, so-and-so's pregnant. And then tells tells Randall it's his baby in the deck of cards in that guy's <laughs> face. <laughs> and the guy just tumbles over the table. <laughs> Can we actually talk about how good Rosario Dawson actually is in this movie? <laughs> well, she's good in most things she does, I isn't know. she? But she's she is honestly for me she's like a world class actress. She you know very you know she does she has this ability where she if she needs to be something very Shakespearean she can just bring that energy. But when she needs to do something like this she can just completely totally change. Like I can get into this groove and she gets into it yeah. so well in this film. Isn't she a little bit of a sort of nerdy geeky type? Oh yeah, on the side she's into she's determined to get into Star Trek, Star Wars, view every. She wants to get in the you know she didn't. She said, "I want to be in every cinematic universe now you can possibly think of." Oh, fair enough. Yeah, and you're right. She can adapt very well to all sorts of different roles. Yeah, but I did quite like her performance in this. She's not the most amazing looking woman, but there is something about her that I find attractive. I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Well, I mean, I've, I've said this many times. I don't think it's bad for saying, but, you know, uh, women of colour, I don't particularly myself find attractive. Um, I just never have. But I can certainly mm. say I think she is a beautiful woman. Um, I can, mm. you know, I feel very comfortable, you know, saying that. She's very obviously a very beautiful woman, you know. And I think, uh, do you know what? I just really, really, the film convinced me that her and Dante um, were actually that close and they could they were truly in love. They just didn't want to accept it yet or admit it. I yeah, mean, so I found, a, I found it an odd pairing. Mm. Really? Yeah, I never, it up. yeah, I, I, I don't, I wasn't convinced. Mm. It, you know, I was convinced for the purpose of the film, but outside in real life, I, I couldn't see those two getting together because Dante, what's, he, what's that actor's name? Oh. Uh, Brian O'Halloran. Yeah. He's a he's a unique looking character, and I yeah I just couldn't I couldn't see that happening, um especially with Kevin Smith's wife the blonde that's in this. Oh yeah, Ted Swell bug. I mean, I yeah you know, she's another bit in these films I didn't like I did not like her at all in this mm. film. I just you know the flashing her tits <laughs> at Randall and stuff and talking about the oversized clitoris and stuff and that I just thought. Nah, I'm not keen on that. I'm not keen well, I'm on more that. impressed about. It. Let's just be more impressed that you know you've got your wife to act in your movie and actually say that stuff. Well, yeah, that is definitely a thing. But then you know, at the end of the day, money. So mm. why not? Yeah, how much could we earn? Oh, yeah, I'll say with you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's happy memories I think about with, and, I, and again, just maybe just going back to my response. I love the message of Clerks too. Well, the first one was about, you know, the mundaneness of life and sort yeah. of more. This one I just love about. And Clerks 3 slightly repeats this, but does it in a completely different way, uh, mm. which we'll go into later. I just love the idea of, you know, it's about filming your 30s or whatever, and you point in your life, and you're just not sure what your direction is or you've sort of lost your way. Because I think everyone, that's a universal thing everyone can relate to, to a degree. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think everyone that's got everything figured out is lying or just deluding themselves. But mm. yeah, I suppose with Clerks 2, it's more about the romance, isn't it? It's more of a romance film. Oh, yeah. Um, but again, with jokes thrown in. Well, this is a perfect, you've just, that's what I was saying. That's what I think the brilliance of what Kevin Smith does when he's on, like when he's firing all cylinders. He actually mm. takes films like religion or what is actually a, a relationship or anything like that. And he actually de dives deep into it and actually presents something quite serious. He just covers it up with dick and fart jokes just to make it a bit more peaceful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That certainly is a. If you yeah, if you read between the lines of Kevin Smith's films, mm. I mean, especially Dogma. Yeah, that Dogma is an incredibly intelligent film, I think, because it's, it's found a loophole in Catholicism. I know. I think that, again. I know we you know we're talking about clubs, but again, the brilliance of Dogma. You know, you talk about religion, the loopholes. You know, what it is, mm. the importance of religion, why people have it. You know. Mixed with that, you've got a giant rubber poop monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, with the twelfth apostle, Jesus, God, yeah. dude, he owes me like twelve bucks. I haven't seen that film for so long. I need to watch it. 
Um, I've got it on Blu-ray because you can't watch because obviously Harvey Weinstein's holding this film at ransom because he's not there anymore. <laughs> but there is, I think, a copy actually on YouTube. So fuck you, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I noticed that with the second one is that he was heavily involved in that, their Weinstein mm. company. And I was like, ah, oh, right, yeah. I wonder who... Um... <laughs> I wonder how to do him a favour to get get this film working. Well, I think... Honestly, I think the film is actually owned by the company Miramax, and he has nothing to do with Miramax anymore. That's why they can get it it's still available and all that stuff. Mm. Well, Clerks 2 was just more of a... Um, mm. for, for me, at the time I saw it, it was a time of life where... Actually, yeah, I was going for a little bit of turmoil, actually. And I was kind of in between things in 2006. And to watch that and just kind of be taken away for it from it for a little while was 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 excellent and it's just stuck in my head i think because of that and i find that with all the clerks films is they're just they encapsulate the feeling and the sentiment of the time period that they were made in 2006 was edgy jokes that you could get away with and people would laugh people wouldn't go oh that's just terrible and put up boycott and stuff they would laugh along or they just would watch it which is what people should be doing now 94 experimental stuff um a lot of new methods going on at the time whereas clerks three which i'm about to lead into unless you want to add anything else about clerks two no i'm just everything you've said i just 100 percent agree with yeah carry on to clerks three now so clerks three i only saw this for the first time yesterday and i'll be honest the first 40 minutes i was like i hate this movie mm. it's just repeating everything they did in the first clerks and I thought, Christ, what a cheap way of making a film. I mean, all they're doing is remaking stuff they've already done. Mm. But then I, once I got into it more, I didn't think there was many jokes. There wasn't a massive amount of humour in this film either. There was bits, but yeah. not as much as one and two. But then the end, obviously, you know, what happens at the end, yeah. that really got me. That really got me quite emotional. Um. Because I started thinking about people that I've lost over the last number of years. I've we been around spoilers? death quite a bit recently. <laughs> Are we talking and, about spoilers uh, in this? Um, yeah, I'm not fussed about it. Okay, I, mean, I suppose we could I mean, put a spoiler uh, warning, but yeah. I 100% agree with you to a degree, um, very much so. When I first started watching Clerks 3, I thought, I knew he, obviously the film would be about the heart attack, which Kevin Smith, thank God, survived. And you know he basically recounted virtually everything that happened to him in this film. Hmm. And... I, you know, I was seeing it and I thought, okay, they're going to be a bit meta here or trying to you know, make the movie within the movie sort of thing. Um, and I didn't mind that. I actually thought it was a nice little idea because um, it's past teaching himself to a degree. And yeah. a bit like you, I was thinking, it, it's okay, it's average. You know, if it carries on like this, I'm not going to get upset by it. But I didn't realise how much actually emotionally invested I was getting into it. Mm. I didn't realise until that ending. I was like, oh my fuck, how how did I get so emotionally invested in this? Yeah. I was seriously getting worried, concerned, and actually when it ha when the death happened at the end, I was like, oh fuck me. Yeah. Um I think that you know the, it's, the movie starts off on a downer, knowing that mm. Rosario Dawson's character is dead and his mm. daughter is dead. And you're like, God blimey, right, okay, so and immediately I thought, well, that's a way of writing her out and not having to pay her any more money. You know, the, the typical pessimistic self that I am. Hmm. But then she's actually credited. And I thought, well, where's she appearing in this then? And then you see, like, the graveyard scene and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, that was another thing, the graveyard scene as well. Some of the things, the dialogue that was going on there. And I love that. You know, Dan Dante's bawling his eyes out. And you're like, fucking hell, mate. You know, Jesus. It's I supposed mean, to be a comedy, yeah. isn't it? I think that, again, you know, we talked about, obviously, I mentioned earlier about number two is about not finding your way. Um, I think number three, I think for me, I t what I took out of it was no matter how old you are, it is never late to go after your dreams or to do what you love. Mm. That's mm. what I got. And that's what, again, talking about just messaging of a movie, I loved it. I've watched a lot of the, like the behind the scenes of making clerks one and two. You can find them on YouTube as well. Everyone, a lot of the jokes and the stuff that he tells about the making it are in this. Have you, he's put in this film. Like it's very famous. You know, the famous dance in clerks one that Jay does outside. Yes. That's exactly mm -hmm. as he said, everyone had to leave the things. He couldn't do it in front of people. 
or you know like you know writing all the stuff um you know there was a lot of that sort of stuff in there and for me i came out of it thinking that film really okay no i'll put it this way i think once after clerks 2 i think kevin smith entered in my opinion even though it might not have been the most successful one of the best times of his career where basically he said fuck it i don't care what audience think i don't care what critics think I'm just going to make the movies how I really see them and love them. We got Tusk, which I thought was great. Red State. Yes, we got Yoga Hogas. Yoga Hogas. But then we got Jane Silent Bob's mm. Drive Back. And now we've had Clerks 3. Taking stuff from his life. I'm just, he's not caring. He's just making it from the heart. And I, I can't deny, I think the film, this part of his career, have been, there's been some really great, not great films, but really good films. And I think Clerks 3 was the pinnacle of that sort of bit. In a way, there were, actually, say there were not as many jokes. The biggest joke for me was the fact that, um, oh, what's the other clerk now they got from Clerks 2? Elias, um, Elias turning into a you, you <laughs> laughing at the Satan, you know, you know, when he pulls down his pants in the in the hospital, take <laughs> my flower, <I'm> Satan, <laughs> you know, it's like, I was literally, <laughs> you know. The fact that, you know, he was referencing, you know, the Mandalorian on the operating table. Again, Smith Pally did that when he was on the operating table just to, you know, keep himself going. Mm. Um, you know, stuff like that I thought was, you know, wonderful. Um, you know, the... Um, and again, it's just to say, the first half, it's you can say it's just like, okay, mate, you're still doing your greatest hits. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I, when it got to the bit where Randall was on the operating table with the whole heart attack thing and that, it felt a bit cheap. I felt mm. that maybe they've made this out of $25,000 as well because it didn't feel like a high-budget production. You didn't want it to be. No, but that's yeah, good, I suppose, because I mean, I, I certainly didn't think it was a high-budget <laughs> production. No, he didn't want it to watching. be more. He wanted, I think he's, he's only said this is one of his most personal films he's actually technically ever done, even if you take away the heart attack stuff. He said it's one more the more sort of personal things he's felt he's ever done. And I, mm. I do applaud him for that. I mean, that's one of the things I, I suppose. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I if I had to rank them, Clerks One would be the bottom. Nothing against it. Then Clerks Three. Then Clerks Two. Because I think Clerks Three. I think the self awareness. I sort of. I basically said myself, I'm going to go along with this and go along with the self awareness. And I think I maybe I enjoyed it. Maybe a bit more for that. And mm -hmm. I I think again, just caring about the characters and when when the death at the end happens, didn't realize actually how much. I had emotionally invested in this movie at this point. I don't think, and I've, I had another friend who didn't realize who had seen this. Like he didn't, it's the exact same thing. Didn't realize exactly like you first 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh fuck. By the ending, how emotionally invested I am. Yeah. Well, the ending, I think is brilliant in this. I, I love that song that plays as well. And mm. I'm from New Jersey song. And it just pans out. It just, Again, it just sort of encapsulates everything, really. I mean, that song is, you know, just a blue collar, working class life mm. that he's explaining. I don't ask for much, uh, you know. I just get on with it, type of thing. And that's what they did as well by working at the quick stop. And and the fact that Randall says, uh, "You know, I wish he was here, buddy," and he is there as oh, well. Oh yeah, that was yeah, yeah. It, it got me. I mean, you know, my girlfriend came home from work. She's like, "You all right?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just watched a film and just made me think a lot." That's all. It did. Well, I just thought about everyone that's that. died. Yeah, I, I just um, I thought about everyone that died recently, even a fucking family pet that died recently. Mm. It's all going from my head. I'm like, Jesus, didn't expect this from this film. Uh, again, I think that's that's where Clerks Three shines really. Hmm. Um, I, yeah. I will say definitely with you though, the the amount of jokes in comparison um, are not really there in comparison to say the first two. They're or not particularly we funny. Type of jokes? Yeah, yeah, different type of joke. They're not particularly funny either. I didn't really laugh that much at the stuff the, the, the stuff that I think I was supposed to laugh at. You know, the guy Elias coming in dressed up in various different degrees of you know clothing and stuff and that. I got it, and yeah, okay. And it was deliberately trying to be over the top. I didn't really laugh at it particularly much, and I can't really think of many jokes in it. Well, this is the thing. I mean, for me, the jokes are like, because I know, and this is one of the issues I have with Clerks 3, unless you know, like the Kevin Smith story, you know, you've seen yeah. all these evening whips yeah. and you've heard all these behind the scenes stories. When you know all this stuff, when you see the stuff on screen, it makes it funnier. Mm. 
if you mm. don't know it, it's not there. Like, you know, when they did the audition process, yes, you yeah. know, you know, he had his mum appear in there, um, <laughs> you know, as one of the women reading it, like the old woman saying, What sort, you know, like saying, Who's who let who, what mum let her son write this crap and all that stuff? Like, because I know that's his mum and that sort of, sort of stuff, it makes it funnier. Yeah. Um, but it's so well, self aware. I think that's one of the big issues close for it. I mean, the argument he made, he made this film for his fans, not the mainstream audience. This is close I, free for those yeah. who love Kevin Smith movies and who have been throughout the whole journey. Nothing wrong yeah. with that, but it is an issue with the film. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it is made for fans because there's a lot in there that would just pass you by. I certainly wouldn't recommend watching Clerks 3 and with not having seen any of the others. Oh, yeah. I mean, Absolutely Sean... Not. Sean tried to watch a bit when I was just watching it down once downstairs, and it's like, I don't get it, I don't get it. And at mm. that point, I read, well, that's because you don't know this, that's because you don't know that. Yeah. No, I definitely think if you want somebody to experience these movies, then definitely start with Clerks and work your way up. Oh, yeah. There's no point in starting at number three because you'll be like, what? This is shit. It just, it just won't be as budget. Hmm. I mean, you... yeah, I'm you struggling to. I was going to say, Go actually, I think also the new generations, generations of like new people in the VSQ universe, it starts off with Jay and Silent Bob reboot, but they carried on a bit in here. You wanna, but like, you know, um, Kevin Smith's daughter, um, obviously she's in um, Jay and Silent Bob reboot as um, Millennium Falcon. Um, that's her character. Uh-huh. Jay's, Jay's um, I won't spot, no, I'll say it because you don't mind. It's Jay's daughter. Right. Um, from um, Jane Silent Bob, Strike Back. You remember the girl he really loved? Yes. Yeah. You know, again, in the film, you know, she ends up now becoming a clerk in Clerks 3 at the end of the film. Right. Okay. Just little things like, you didn't even know that, did you? No. No. You know that blonde-haired one? Um, We were talking about right at the very end. Yes, the right at the very end, helping put stuff on the shelf. She was also at the um, funeral um, saying cute smile to... um, you know, Elias' own Silent and Bob. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah that's yeah. Harley Quinn Smith. That is Kevin Smith's daughter. Now she's now past oh, the right. of the viewer skew. And we're guessing, like, you know, I can't remember her name, but she's been in a few as well. And, you know, right. there are connections. And there are, we are getting a new generation. And going back to where we started this whole thing, Twilight of the Mall Rats or The Passion of the Mall, I'd have no idea what they're going to call it. I imagine we're going to get a whole lot more new generation of Kevin Smith characters, viewer skew universe characters coming in. That's going to be interesting, that because when I was doing that news read on Mall Rats too, I was thinking, how are they going to do this? Because malls are, are like ghost towns now in most places. So how are they going to do this? I imagine he'll put that as part of the story that they're not really existing anymore. It's got to be, isn't it? Because how else? Unless he goes back in time and it's based, you know, like the next year from Mall Rats. The annoying thing is, I always everyone always hopes he would do a Dogma too which would be sort of pastiche on... Everyone's like thinking it would be great you could do like a pastiche on The Omen or something. But now Alan Rickman is no longer with us as the Megatron. It's like mm. not quite the same anymore. No. I'm as anatomically correct as a Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird as well. He dropped his trousers. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, I'm, you know, if Cameron Smith wants to carry on making these sort of low-budget films, carrying on his view of the universe, you know, I don't know, you know, More Rats 2, Dogma to eventually or something like that um i'm all for it you know if you create new stories as well in the viewerskew universe as far as i'm concerned if, you know if people want it this universe this viewerskew universe that keeps being mentioned this clerks and jay and silent bob and all that they were the first movies i ever saw with the concept of it all being in the same oh yeah universe they were the first ones i ever saw that had that concept to a lot of people they were i mean technically cinematic universes have gone back to the 50s i mean to, if you really want to be you know film historian and all that stuff it was the universal monsters that were the first if you were cinematic universe because eventually they had their own films but then they started crossing them over all the time so you know oh, people okay. said like universal did like the first cinematic universe but i think view skew is definitely probably the proper second one before mcu first- it's definitely the first one that I was ever aware of that, you know, these different characters popped up in their own movies, like Chase and Amy and the others. Um, and I guess he got that for his love of the old comic book stuff. Mm. I think he did a great job with it, to be fair. I think if you look at the first three films, they set up the rules of this universe. You know, everyone can, you know, people come in, 
characters, people will be playing different parts of what they did originally and all that stuff. Mm. And I think it works. I mean, I mean, to be honest, one thing I think you'll like, I didn't mention this, but in Jane and Silent Bob Reboot, what he does as well, he hides in it little sequels to all the other movies, like little things. Like there's, right. you know, like Matt Damon comes back as Loki, explains what happened to himself after after Dogma. Um, there's All a little right. bit okay. carrying on from Chasing Amy. There's a little bit that carries on, you know, from other stuff, which is again nice little things just for fans. Hmm. This is thing, just pop- yeah. I was going to say that something popped up in my head about Clerks Three is that this was obviously the end of that storyline. Hmm. It's obviously Dante dying. Um, it was just very sad and it's just the closing of a story um so it was the death of dante and also the death of the whole clerks series mm. there's never going to be another another one of these that's it, it's done i don't think there'll be another clerks film i mean they've i feel they've left it open enough that if you want you can start it with some other people do a whole new generation so to speak if you wanted well, to but yeah, i don't I think kevin smith fans will want that no, I certainly wouldn't want that. I don't really consider myself a huge fan. Uh, okay, that'd be awful. As I mentioned, I'd much rather see the newish sort of generation of characters that were starting to creep in, get their own movies and their own sort of different things. I'd be happy with that. A phase two. Yeah, phase, phase two. Phase one, phase two, phase three of all that Marvel crap. So why not Perfect. do it with these ones? I mean, I'll tell you what, something which was actually really, I thought was quite touching, is I know that Harley... So I know so I know her name's Harley Quinn Smith, I'll just say Harley here, and Jen, Jen and his wife, they can't watch the heart attack scene in this film. Um, because Kevin Smith literally wrote it so close to exactly what happened, they just still find it too hard to even watch it. And understandably. Mm. I mean, again, I've got I've got the comedy special he did where you can see he starts having the heart attack. I mean, you wouldn't know. <laughs> you would not know. Right. It's quite scary, actually. <laughs> Christ, yeah, because it's ongoing, isn't it? As they say, they say to Randall when they wheel him in, it's no, you're having his heart attack at the moment, it's ongoing. I mean, you know, the I name of it is true, the Widowmaker, mm. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I don't fully understand how that works, but Christ, thank God it just worked. That's all I can think about. Speaking of like you know, heart attacks, Kevin Smith, and all that, there's a few things I picked up on in Kirk Clerks 3 is Kevin Smith's obviously lost a lot of weight and he's obviously done that for health reasons. Yeah, but he his skin doesn't look very good in this film. It looks like he's just spent a whole week sunbathing. It looks very. I don't know, he doesn't look well. I didn't think he looked very well. In yeah, this. I think honestly, ever since he's lost the way, I mean, they mentioned this in the one previous Jane Silent and Bob reboot. You know how he went all vegan and stuff. Jay Bob went all vegan and stuff. He, yeah, yeah. Ever since he has lost the weight, you know, he hasn't looked. Should we say as healthy as normal? He has looked to say a lot more paler. I mean, as far as I'm aware, what everyone says, he's in really, he's in the best shape he's ever been in. He's in the best, you know, zing of his life. He really is feeling it. So, I don't know. Maybe also bad color correction. I don't know. Maybe the other observation, Jay. Hmm. What's happened to his teeth? Did you notice that? Yeah, he's got I think this big they... top, big top row of like really shiny, almost like piano keys. Majority of them are probably I hear are probably fake after all the fights and stuff he's got into. But again, yeah, also, his wife is in the films. His daughter's been starting to go in. His little baby daughter's now going into the films. Um, just little things like that. No, Quite nice. Not? I mean, again, they're you, nice because I know because of Kevin Smith fan that they're there. Yeah. And also from a very um, cynical point of view, you want to keep the gravy train going. You know, why not? Well, these films don't make that much money. I mean, this film, technically, if you look at, if you went on IMDb or whatever, box of you say this film made a flop. So, but actually, because of the road trip that they did and all the extra, you know, home video sales, it actually does make a good peft, good um, profit, as long as he can keep his budgets within. Okay, let me, um, yeah, let's just briefly go through that, and then we'll um, maybe think about wrapping this one up. But um, I'm going to just go through. So this is Clerks 94. Let me just share that, put that up on screen for people watching. So Clerks 94, so estimated... Twenty-seven thousand dollars to make, and overall, it made three point one. Opening weekend, it made its budget back. Hmm. 
That's amazing, really, because what would be the advertising back in 94, 95? How would they well, just advertise the cinemas, just, you know, Just saying, you know, it'll be at cinemas, really, in posters. Yeah, but can you imagine those posters? It's just like, I mean, you've probably seen the marketing posters of oh, clerks, yeah. and it's just a group of people staring up at a camera. So, and when you look at that, you think, why the hell would I watch that? <laughs> I mean, technically, yeah. do, you know, do you know what I was actually going to say? It's like a lot of people now praise the studio Blumhouse, the horror people, obviously just released Megan, you know, for oh, what yeah, they do. Yeah. But he's copying what Kevin Smith did, low-budget films, but big on returns. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, news bit on that Megan, or Megan, how do you pronounce mm. it? Um, it being a PG-13, um, my I've... theory... From no. what I've heard from, I, again, saw another, I saw a friend when we talked about earlier in the show who's seen it. He said, you know, he didn't really mind it being PG-13. It wasn't really a proper sort of real scary horror film, but the PG-13 sort of thing allowed it to have a bit more fun and a bit more rewatchability, he felt. So... It was done very well at the cinema. I mean, it's made mm. plenty of money, so people are liking it. Uh, here's Clerks 2. I just want to check the budget out on this. Um, yeah, there's the movie shirt. Uh, right, where is it? Box office. So it cost five million to make, and it made yeah. ten million. It's opening weekend. That's not bad numbers, is it? Twenty. Is that twenty six million? Yeah. 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 See so again, five million get a twenty six million thing. Yeah, that's that's not bad. You can't argue with that. I mean, if you're a money man, and uh, Kevin Smith yeah. comes to you and says, oh, "I want financing for Clerks." Three, looking at those numbers, you're like, yeah, okay, all right, we'll go for it. Right, clerks three, last one. Yeah, this one's going to show it's going to make a loss, but I know it's not. Right, and that Box scene as well was brilliant in the movie. Which one? Go up to the top, the bit where yes. you get those out, and they start doing that. <laughs> yeah, they're doing this strange dancing yeah. stuff. Yeah. The... <laughs> Did you notice actually on this poster here mm. that the the cash register says thirty seven on it? Mm. Yeah, I had seen that. He put that in. That was great. Uh, Seven million to make. Oh dear. Yeah, six hundred and seventy four thousand. So it made four million just from that, but you have not that not included other things like the um, home video sales and the other money that came from the road trip because he didn't release this normally. Kevin Smith did a road trip like he did with the previous film he did, Reboot, where he took it round America and showed it to people and had a QA. and a So if you actually right. include the costing of that, minus what it takes to do that. The film is actually, I've been told, made... The film was made for about, what was it, $4 million, did it say it got, needed to make? It's made... Yeah, just, about, over, yeah, just over $4 million. It's made yeah. about sixteen, So it's still made a good chunk of change. It's just not being accounted for correctly. Yeah. Fair enough. And I think mm -hmm. Kevin Smith wants to do that now. He's not really interested in the big cinema release now. He wants to like take it around, show it to be with his fans, really. And I don't blame him for that. Yeah, but there's a lot of that, sort of mostly like with, with us YouTubers. It's you create a fandom, you create a community of people that like your stuff and contribute and whatnot. And then you only really give a shit about those people. You don't care about trying to mass audience stuff, do you? No. So I can understand where he's going with that. All right. Well, anything else you wanted to bring up, finish on? I'm not going to say the line. I know we joked about who would say it first on this oh. review, but I'm not going to say it. It doesn't really fit, though, because we know we are supposed to be here today. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Henry, your channel, you want to say to my audience, if they don't know you, what it's about? Yeah, so for anyone who's just joined, you don't know me, I am my I am on YouTube as The Bond Geek. Um, I am a channel dedicated to the franchise of James Bond, the movies, the games, the books... We look in a lot of editorials, what if, top tens. If you're a Bond fan, there is something there for you there. You can find me on YouTube, The Bond Geek, Instagram, The Bond Geek, Twitter, Facebook, all the same, mostly on in on YouTube and Instagram. And I pop up you know, every now and then on this channel because I love just chatting with these guys. Yeah. I like chatting on um, Henry's live streams. I, t I end up hijacking it. And then what Henry does is ends up talking about my channel when he should be talking about his channel. <laughs> You, I don't know if you notice that tactic or not. <laughs> I do, and I just like I, I just don't mind it because I like chatting about the. Ch I'd like chatting about it to you. So I don't really mind. Yeah, uh, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. 
All right, well, let's leave it there then. That's been quite good. I'm amazed we went on for 55 minutes. I thought we were going to be cutting this short about, you know, half an hour because I was ready to shit on these films, to be honest. And then I rewatched them all and I thought, actually, no, there's clever stuff in here and I like them. It reminds me of a better time. I think, honestly, what we should get out of this is that you will probably watch Jane Silent Bob reboot now. Mm, Yeah. I don't think you're going to end up being a, like a massive fan of it saying this is amazing, but I think you might come back to me and say, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> but I want to ask, what's the next review on this channel going to be? Don't know yet. Um, we need to discuss that behind the scenes. Two um, towers? I, I have no idea. I, um, obviously, Justin, a member of the team, he's moving house, so he's pretty been... Yeah, pretty tied up for the last number of months actually on work basis and things like that um, but Samir will probably be with me next weekend I don't know I guess I have to speak to him if it's his pick it'll be something from the 60s or 70s if it's my pick it'll be something completely random because I like throwing curveballs I like to do modern movies recently you know stuff that was released last week um, stuff that's done in the 80s 90s I don't know yet I don't know we need to talk about it Keep, but anyway, yes. You're going to keep me in suspense. Even honestly, after the cameras roll, everyone, he's not even going to tell me that. He's just going to keep me no, in suspense. Because I, I, I genuinely don't know. We don't have a schedule <laughs> or a plan or anything. We literally decide. We do a movie review, but then after that, if all three of us are here, we usually just end up like, well, we could do this or we could do that. And so, yeah, but I'm not really feeling that. Oh, God, yes, from the 70s. Oh, it's three hours long. I'm not watching that. These are the conversations that we have off camera. We don't know. We generally so don't clearly, know. Avatar 2 is not going to be reviewed for a bit. <laughs> No, not until it comes to streaming services. I'm not going to cinema. I can't stand no. the cinema. I hate it. <laughs> it's not as good I'm as it old. Really... I'll never stop going, but the quality, not of the films, but of cinema etiquette has oh. greatly decreased so much. But that's the topic for another. That's a rant video. And you know, that sorry, that's between us two. That's a <laughs> yeah. rant video. In fact, I will join you on that rant video. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, definitely. We can line that up because, yeah, I agree. I. Oh, it is the number one factor as why I don't like going to the cinema. Yeah. But anyway. All right, let's leave it there then, mate. And um, yeah, so all the people who have joined us throughout and watched this stream, thank you very much. Well, for the new subscribers to this channel, hopefully you enjoy more than just the shorts. And uh, yeah, subscribe. There is a red button somewhere that you can click on. And um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, if you're watching and join the shorts, you come over, you watch the news reads that I do. Um, I'm trying to do those every day. And then obviously the movie reviews, long form content. You know, we have a podcast, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. I pretty much dumped Instagram. Doesn't drive traffic. So whatever. But we, we do have an account now. So that's it from me. So yes, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. All right. Thanks for joining me, Henry. Pleasure as always. Goodbye. Good night.